Remember that n by n matrix is called idempotent. If you multiply the matrix by itself, the result is equal to the matrix itself. Remember that I as identity matrix and zero matrix are both idempotent matrices. Question says, if A is idempotent, then the transpose of A and I minus A are also idempotent. Well, let us begin. Since A is idempotent, it means that if you multiply A by itself, it becomes A. So if you form the transpose of the matrix, it's equal to, instead of A, we're going to use the multiple of A. So you can replace these two and then take the transpose. It becomes A times A transpose. But remember that if you have the multiplication of two matrices and you take the transpose, it becomes the multiplication of the transpose. And the order is important. But here you have the same matrix repeated here. So you don't care about the order that much. The transpose of A times the transpose of A is equal to the transpose multiplied by itself. So what happened? You say that, hey, the transpose of A is equal to the transpose of A multiplied by itself. But this is basically the definition of a matrix being idempotent. If you take B to be the transpose of A, You just showed that B is equal to B multiplied by itself, which is basically the definition of being idempotent. Now, what about I minus A? If I raise it to the second power, what's the meaning of that? It means that I'm taking I minus A and multiply it by itself. I minus A multiplied by I minus A is I squared minus I times A minus A times I plus A squared. So what happens here? I have I minus A. Why is that? Because A is idempotent. Instead of this, you can write matrix A itself. Negative A plus A, it becomes zero matrix. So you end up with I minus A. So what happens here? You say that, hey, matrix C is equal to I minus A. And I just showed that if I multiply C by itself, it becomes C as well, which is basic definition of idempotent matrix. So as long as A is idempotent, you can definitely conclude that it's transpose and I minus A are both idempotent matrices. Now remember these two simple examples that are idempotent. Suppose A times B is equal to A and B times A is equal to B. You want to show that A and B are idempotent matrices. Remember the definition of being idempotent. An N by N matrix or a matrix of order n is called idempotent if a squared is equal to a, or if you multiply a by itself, it becomes a again. First, we show that a is idempotent. So let's begin with the same argument. You can show that b is idempotent. Since a, b is equal to a, we have a, b times a equals to a, which is a squared. So what we did, we just multiplied this equality by a. So a, b times a equals to a times a, but this is just a multiplied by itself. Well, what's happening now? Since we can group left-hand side together, you can write this as a times b a, but b a is equal to b, so it becomes a times b. You have a times b, by the condition that is imposed here, it is equal to A. So guys, take a look. You have left-hand side and left-hand side. Both of them are the same thing. A times B times A. You just group them differently. And your right-hand side are 
equal to each other as well. So a squared is equal to a. You just conclude that a is idempotent. So again, left-hand side are equal to each other. Right-hand side must be equal to each other. So with this argument, a is idempotent. With the same discussion, b is idempotent as well. So as long as a, b is equal to a, b, a is equal to b, then you can show that a and b are idempotent matrices. So another interesting case is, suppose you have two matrices like a and b, square matrices of the same size. If the multiplication of a and b is equal to zero and matrix A is idempotent, and if you take C to be B minus A inverse, it means that B minus A is invertible, then BC is equal to I minus A and BCB is equal to B. This is the general form of the question in the exam. So let us begin how we're gonna show that. We know that A is idempotent. So by definition, A times A must be equals to A. Now, since A times B is equal to zero, I minus A times the inverse of C is equal to I minus A times B minus A. So again, I minus A times the inverse of C. C is equal to B minus A inverse. So B minus A is equal to inverse of C, All right? Since we know these are invertible, we're using this condition. We're not working with A and B or invertibility or singularity of those two matrices. We're just saying that, hey, since we know that C is equal to B minus A inverse, I can work with the inverse of C. I multiply I minus A by the inverse of C. But the inverse of C is equal to B minus A. I minus A times B minus A is equal to B. Why is that? I times B is B minus I times A, which is just A, you have a negative sign, minus AB, which becomes zero, plus a squared. So take a look. I get b minus a minus a b plus a squared. With the condition that a b is equal to zero, this becomes zero but a squared is equal to a. So a minus a is zero matrix, you end up with b. So you can easily say that b, c is equal to i minus a. Again, we are just working with invertibility of c. I don't care about a, I don't care about b, just b, c. So I minus A times the inverse of C becomes B. If I multiply both sides by C, BC becomes I minus A. Perfect. We just showed that BC is equal to I minus A. We are not talking about A being invertible, B being invertible, nothing like that. We only use this piece of fact that B minus A is invertible. Some of you on the exam say, okay, what if A is invertible? What if A is not invertible? We don't care about that part. We don't use those properties. You are not allowed to use those properties. If you wanna use those properties, you have to consider all cases. Now what? Now, since you know that BC is equal to I minus A, multiply everything by right-hand side by B, you get IB minus AB, but AB is equal to zero. So this guy is equal to zero. And then you end up with I times B, which is B. Here we go. Nice and easy.
Next question. If I minus AB is invertible, then I minus BA is also invertible. How do we prove that? If I minus BA is invertible, we should be able to show that this system has a unique and trivial solution x equals to zero. Why is that? Because if this guy is invertible, we can multiply both sides by the inverse of I minus BA. This guy disappears and you end up with zero. Okay, let us do that. I minus BA times X equal to zero. Well, if I just distribute X, multiply X here, X times I minus BAX, and the right-hand side, I end up with zero. Now, BAX is equal to X. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to multiply both sides by A. I get A, B, A, X equals to A, X. Now what? I'm going to bring everything to one side. A, X minus A, B, A, X is equal to zero. I'm going to factor out A, X. I end up with I minus A, B times A, X. On the right-hand side, I have a zero. But use the information in the question. I minus AB is invertible. So the inverse of this matrix exists. I can multiply both sides by the inverse of this matrix. And on the right-hand side, I end up with zero. On the left-hand side, I have AX equal to zero. So X must be equal to zero. So we just showed that I minus BA is invertible. Why? Because this system has only trivial solution. If this guy is invertible, you can multiply both sides by the inverse of I minus BA and X becomes zero. Since you just showed that X is zero, so I minus BA is indeed invertible. Some of you on the exam came up with a formula and I have no idea how you got that formula. This is not correct. We are not looking for answers online. We need to use the information that we learned in this class. So if you wrote down some formulas without explaining that formula, where did it come from? You lost a couple of points.